everyone, it's Dominique, and today I'm going to teach you how to do some basic quilling with paper. I do apologize, I cannot find my glue stick or my glue. I think my one-year-old has hidden it away somewhere safe, so I'll try and improvise as best as I can. These are some shapes that I've made. Um, with quilling, all you're doing is taking very thin strips of paper, maybe half a centimeter in width and whatever length. They're usually quite long. Um, and you can buy these in a craft store already cut thinly for you in various colors. And you can get the little quilling tool. This is one style. Um, and you probably can't see it, but there is a little slit at the top to put your paper in to start your rolling. Um, some people use tweezers. I haven't found a need to use them as of yet, but I'm still basic with this as well. I'm still a beginner. So here's some shapes that I made, and all of these generally start with a circle, something round, and you glue the tip, the edge on once you're done rolling it. You just glue it down with glue stick or a little, little dab of um, white glue, all-purpose glue. So I have a teardrop, or it could be a flower petal, or it could be an animal ear or an elf. I have a triangle, <clears throat> sorry, a triangle, a little heart, there, you can see it there, kind of an eye shape, or another flower petal. <clears throat> square, some tight circles, and some bigger circles. Now, because the paper is all the same length, to make it smaller or bigger depends on how tightly you roll your paper and determines whether or not you decide to loosen it up a bit after you've rolled it. Here's a funky kind of heart. I glued the center pieces together and I just rolled two individual pieces. I folded the paper in half first, sorry. And then I rolled two halves to make the heart. And I think that's pretty much it. And they keep their shape really well. And I just keep them in a little cream cheese tub. You can use these to decorate cards. I've I have fond memories of someone showing me a Victorian paper doll that was completely quilled. And then when I saw this little tool at the craft store, it was under 4 euros, and the paper itself as well, um, I got inspired and I thought I'd try it out. So I'll show you the basics with what I can do, and um, hopefully you like it as well. I'm thinking. It, of making several pieces and making a card for somebody once I'm ready. Okay. So what you want to do <coughs> is take a strip of paper and just tear off the ends because they're attached. And you have your quilling tool. And like I said, you should see a little slot or slit in between like such, but you don't want to put it all the way through. And then you can start rolling it. And some people say not to roll your tool, but to wrap the paper around. I find this tiring, personally. What I do is I turn my tool, and I just continue to rotate it, and you'll notice that your paper may not roll evenly. That's fine. Just hold with your forefinger and your thumb, allowing space for the paper to feed through. That way it stays nice and tight as you roll it. And you can do this while watching television or watching a movie. It's very quick and very easy to do the basic shapes. Just be careful you don't give yourself a paper cut. Okay. So this is a part where I would put a dribble of glue, like very 
very small amount. A little goes a very long way with this craft. And you just pull it off and it will come out easily. So you have a circle and it probably looks like a cake with different layers. Um, to make it all one layer, I just give it a nice firm squeeze so that way it's nice and flat. <clears throat> Apply the glue, press it down a bit, and that will give you a tight, tight circle. Before applying the glue, that is the time where you should decide what size you would like. So you can open it up by just letting it go, and it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and then apply the glue, whatever you would like to do. That's the good thing about quilling is that it's adjustable. Now, if you wanted to make, let's say, a teardrop shape, just pretend this is glued, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, you would take your finger and thumb and just squeeze the edge. And then you would have a teardrop shape. If you wanted that funky eye kind of shape, then all you would have to do is just squeeze the other side and make it even. Another option as well. Let's see what I can do here. I'm just trying to make it round again to work with. If you wanted to do a triangle, pinch one side so that way you have a point and then taking your thumb, carefully flattening the bottom but try not to flatten the top and then pinch on one side, I know this might be hard to see because it's so tiny and then pinch the opposite corner to get your third corner and then you will have a triangle if you wanted a heart, you could do the pinch one section to make a point, turn it upside down, and press inwards. And then you will have, this is not the best example, the one I already have made. Then you will have a heart just pinch one end and then press your finger downward to make a dent and then quickly pinch to make some corners for a heart. For a square I'm going to roll up a new piece. Try and use something a bit darker. So you take your paper, you thread it through the slit if you have one. I know some people have different quilling tools where the needle is much longer, but this is not sharp entirely. I don't recommend poking your eye with it, but it's not sharp as a needle. Do your rolling. And you can always cut the paper in half if you don't want to use a full length. It's entirely up to you. But the tighter you roll it, the smaller your item will be. Okay. So I'm just going to, whoops, try that again. As you can see, I now have a very curly piece of paper. I didn't pinch it tight enough as I was slipping the piece off.
Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully this works. There we go. Going to whoops, flatten it a bit. I'm not too worried about losing a bit of losing a bit because at that point I would be determining my size by expanding it. Not too much though. And then once I determine what size I want to start with, then I would glue it on. Now for a square, it's a little bit more complicated. Make one corner and pinch, but don't pinch too hard. And then go in the opposite diagonal and make a corner there. And then make a corner over here, make your third corner. So now it kind of looks like a 90 degree triangle and then you're just going to squeeze your work a little bit but not too much or else the center will pop out squeeze it and then quickly just pinch it there and then this is the part where you have the basic outline of a square and you can just work with it by pinching it a bit more and firming up the sides and I kind of take my first fingers and thumbs on opposite sides and I kind of squish it together inwards and that kind of helps to make the shape of a square as well and there you go basic quilling thank you so much for watching